Yes, welcome back. Uh, so this will be our last uh, presentation for the Yumawaka Room. So it's uh, on the track State of the Art and uh, the presentation is called State of Mago 3D, an open source based digital twin platform. Uh, unfortunately, our uh, speaker cannot join us live today, but uh, he prepared to us a pre-recorded talk. And also uh, you can check his uh, how to contact him. His email address is included in his slide. So our presenter is Sanghee Shin. So Sanghi is a founder and CEO of Gaia 3D, an open source geospatial company in Korea. He is currently leading the development of Mago 3D project, an open source based digital twin platform. So if you're in the social gathering and still uh, looking for something to treasure hunt, yeah, uh, watch out because you might uh, encounter this uh, project. So yeah, uh, we'll share the uh, pre-recorded talk now. And good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sang Hee Shin, and I'm from South Korea. At first, I'm very sorry for the recorded presentation. Uh, here in Korea, it's quite late Friday night, so I had to record this presentation earlier for this talk. Uh, today, I'll talk about the Mago 3D, an open source based digital team platform. Uh, before starting my talk, I would like to turn off my video first. Many people asked me the meaning of Mago. Actually, I named this project Mago 3D after goddess of earlier Earth in Korean old myths. You can see the picture of her uh, from all old Korean paintings at the left side. So Mago is the goddess of Earth in Korean old myths. Actually, Mago 3D project has started in 2014 as a part of a national GIS R&D project funded by Korean government. Uh, we released version 1.0 in 2017, and uh, we branded it as a GOB platform at the time. Uh, at the time, one of our main goals was integrated, integrating building information modeling and the 3D GIS on the same platform. And in 2019, we released version 2.0 and branded Mago 3D as a digital twin platform. From then, digital twin concept has been getting popular and popular. And this year, May this year, we released Mago 3D version 2.5 successfully. So what is Mago 3D? I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with digital twin or how many of you know Mago 3D. Uh, Mago 3D is an open source based digital twin platform that can replicate and simulate the real world object, process, and the phenomena on web environment. Uh, Mago 3D can integrate, manage, and visualize various kinds of data such as city GML, indoor GML, uh, point cloud LAS, and building information modeling IFC, 3D studio file, and uh, IoT sensor data and other popular GIS format as well. Uh, some of the highlights of Mago 3D are like this. At first, Mago 3D is open source and open standard based digital twin platform. And uh, Mago 3D can integrate BIM, AEC, and 3D data on the same platform. And uh, Mago 3D runs on web browsers without additional programs or plugins. And uh, Mago 3D supports automatic data conversion. So if you drag and drop your data on your web browser, then Mago 3D will convert your data to a stre streaming format and automatically display that. And uh, Mago 3D has pluggable architecture, so many simulations can be easily integrated and plugging uh, to the Mago 3D. Also, it is a web-based uh, uh, collaboration platform, so you can work together with your colleagues uh, on top of Mago 3D. Uh, this is the system layers of Mago 3D. Mago 3D has multi-layer structures like this, so persistence layer, business layer, application layer, API layer, data layer. So this is a kind of conceptual design. Uh, of Mago 3D. And I'll talk about uh, another 
very system architecture here. So this is over system architecture of Mago 3D. And then the, as you see, we employ many open source projects from for the Mago 3D. We use PostGIS for data management, and uh, we use GeoServer and GeoWebCache for two-dimensional data service. And for rendering part, uh, we make use of Cism.js. And uh, actually, on top of Cism.js, we developed Mago3D.js. And then Mago3D.js enhanced the features and the rendering quality of Cism.js. This table shows the current version of every open source project we currently use for Mago3D. As you see, we massively use various kinds of open source projects for the Mago 3D. Uh, it, it, it's really great because it's open source, all open source. And uh, however, at the same time, this increases the dependencies on other open source projects as well. Uh, so Mago 3D is get, getting complicated and complicated as time goes on. And, uh, and then by, uh, complicated by with other projects. That's the one of the headache recent, recent days. Okay, let's talk about the main features of Mago 3D. Uh, Mago 3D supports drag and drop style automatic data conversion and display. And uh, so like Dropbox, just drag your 3D data to your browser uh, and drop it, that's all. And then the Mago 3D will automatically convert your data and then display your data in your web browser. And the Mago 3D supports various kinds of two-dimensional and three-dimensional geospatial data, uh, including 3D Studio, OBJ, FBX, Building Information Modeling, IFC, OGC CityGML, OGC IndoorGML, and the Point Cloud LAS, and the Shapefile, GeoPackage, GeoTip. Also, you can set up your own rule for your data management that is uh, called rule-based ba rule management system. And uh, in this new version, 2.5, we added a brand new 3D tile algorithm called Smart Tiling. Uh, smart Tiling reduces network traffic and uh, increases streaming speed and then it increases the rendering quality. And uh, we have successfully carried out several simulations for example, sunlight simulation, shadow simulation, air pollution spreading simulation, and wind field simulation, and uh, town design simulation, like uh, SimCity, and other simulation as well. And uh, we uh, embedded the kind of simulation to our enterprise version. Also, at this uh, 2.5 version, we also added a dashboard for administrators or managers. So this dashboard provides functionalities for user monitoring, data monitoring, API monitoring, system health check, schedule management, and others. Uh, from now on, I'll show some of the new features of Mago 3D here. Uh, currently, you are seeing the data upload user interface. So as I mentioned, you can drag and drop your data to your browser, and then you can see the result of your 3D data or 2D data very quickly. And uh, this slide shows Mago 3D rendering. Uh, Mago 3D can render large size and very complex objects in your web browser. Uh, you are currently seeing the CTGML data at the left side uh, with the texture. And uh, also, you can see the building information modeling data at the right side. Uh, actually, uh, over the last two or three years, we've experienced uh, tons of city data from uh, Korean government. And then uh, we experienced how to enhance the performance with the kind of tons of city data. So we devised new city tiling method called the smart tiling. As I already mentioned, the smart tiling increases the uh, streaming speed and reduces the network traffic and increase the rendering quality. Uh, this slide shows how Mago 3D interacts with IoT data with OGC sensor things APIs. 
So over the whole South Korea, uh, air quality data is collected and transmitted in every 10 minutes. Uh, for example, like uh, PM10, PM2.5, and NOx, and other uh, ozones, and others. Uh, usually, this data is serviced and displaced as a just point data. However, we employed the GDAL grid and we employed the uh, used the GDAL counter. So in our pilot project, we collect those data through the OGC sensor things API and then the display as a heat map style uh, with the ISO lines as you see. Mm. We successfully visualize with the data also. With the data usually uh, reside in a grid format or HDF format and we pass those data and uh, visualize them like this. It was very interesting and uh, very uh, impressive result. We are to successfully display indoor GML uh, data together with the sensor data like shown here so you can see how many people are in each room so you see room 9 have five, five indoor occupants and room 21 uh, has eight indoor occupants and the, through the ODC sensor things API we can monitor how many people are in a, each room how many people are in a one store how many people are in one building uh, using that kind of information, uh, we can estimate how many people are left uh, in, in case of fire, in case of disaster. Yes, surely mouse 3D can visualize large size point cloud data as well. It's a basic feature. And uh, from now on, I would like to share some very interesting ex experiences in this project for LH Corp. LH Corp is a state-owned public land and housing company. Uh, we developed the uh, same city-like functions for them. So users of LH Corp can place and move apartments, buildings, street lights, and trees for their uh, planning purpose, as you see in this slide. If you need any analytical functions from outside of your system, uh, you'd better use OGC WPS. We also employed uh, outside analytical server for several analysis, like in this slide, and uh, we, uh, in, uh, we used uh, OGC WPS web processing service. So it was very successful. So it, it gives us a flexibility to expand our functionalities to our uh, system. Monitoring the self-driving car. Yes, if you can get the coordinate of that car, self-driving self car, and then the, we can put that coordinate to the uh, our mouse 3D, and then the, we can display that on that exact position, like a moving bus or like a moving a taxi or other things. Dashboard. Actually, this is for administrator of the system, or this is for uh, for managers of our system. So, manager of this system can easily check and uh, manage the current system. Like user user management, it provides user management, it provides data management, statistics, and others. So. And then the managers or administrators uh, quickly respond to the event that was uh, occurred by uh, some uh, on, uh, ex exceptional conditions. From here, I would like to show cases we've done so far. And more and more construction companies are trying to use building information modeling uh, over their construction phases. So if we can integrate those beam data with the construction process, that will help us understand the picture of the project in a more realistic way. Now you are seeing the uh, chemical plant in building information modeling data on top of Magos 3D. Uh, and uh, you can check the construction phase using beam data like this. So you can see the floor by floor uh, constructions. Also, you can compare before and after construction by splitting your screen into two. Uh, 
Uh, this is Seoul National University's new campus project. At the left side, you can see the current SEC status of the campus site. And on the right side, you can see the future image of the campus. So left side, uh, we fly the drone to capture image and point cloud. And right side, we put the planning data there. Uh, and then the, you can compare both very easily. LH Coffee is uh, one of the largest state-owned company in Korea in charge of providing land and house for public purpose. We work together with LH for their own new town project. You are seeing the town planning using Margo 3D. And then the, actually, as you know, there are lots of lots of regulations around the new development plan. And it is very important to check whether, it, whether there is any breach or violation of the kind of regulations in planning phase. So as you see with this system, LH staffs can quickly find the apartment that is higher than regulations and can quickly adjust the problem. So he lowered down the ap apartment stores or uh, increased the apartment uh, store too. And the, by doing this, uh, uh, he, he can uh, fit this plan to the regulations. Yes, sunlight is quite important factor to school students. Uh, in Korea, uh, there is a regulation that all buildings around the school should not block the sunlight to school too long. So schools should have at least four hours of sunlight at winter solstice. So we need to check that uh, before construction. This video shows whether a new plan meets this kind of regulation or not. Uh, after simulation, we now see that uh, this plan meets the regulation because the result, uh, the result hours are more than four hours. This shows how development can change the wind flows and the directions. Left side, you can see the before construction side. And uh, right side, you can see the after construction site. So, and, uh, so wind experts, they simulate this kind of data and then we get the data from them and then we convert their data to a visible format and then the, we display that like this. So you right side, you can see the vortex and then the change the wind directions. Uh, uh, after the construction. So uh, using this kind of digital twin technology, we can easily check the, uh, uh, where, where vortex will happen and what we should consider before constructions. Also using this kind of simulation, uh, we can check the uh, wind direction uh, season by season. Uh, uh, this video shows the winter uh, wind directions and uh, this one is uh, uh, spring direction and uh, this is uh, summer season wind direction and then the, we will see the autumn season some uh, wind direction uh, like this. This shows the very, very high resolution wind field data uh, covering whole Seoul metropolitan cities. The wind data resolution is 10 meter by 10 meter. It's ridiculously quite high resolution. And uh, we successfully visualize this, this large size wind field data uh, for the pilot project. This sample shows the how uh, wind flows uh, over the surface and then the, you can see how wind uh, flows between the buildings and how they flow over the mountains and how they how winds flow uh, through through the road and other things 
And this is the case I mentioned earlier, real-time air pollutant data visualization. Uh, you can see the IoT sensor data uh, collected every 10 minutes. So there are lots of, lots of uh, uh, air quality stations uh, covered in whole South Korea. They collect the uh, uh, this kind of air pollutant data, but that is usually displayed as a point, but now you can see this kind of data as a heat map at the same time with the uh, uh, ice line as well. agency and data like this. Hey, Korea Meteorological Agency and visualize that data like this. I've talked about the bright side of the Marvel City Mini. However, there's always dark side as well. Uh, left side, you can see the bright side of Mars over the last three years. Uh, there, there was increased visibility in the Korean market, and uh, there was a successful large-scale project. And uh, we, we've got many reference sites, and we've improved rendering speed and quality, and then the, we expanded to uh, uh, enterprise solutions. And we've got many experiences about data and other systems. This is a bright side. At the same time, we have dark side. But actually, Marvel 3D is almost isolated only in Korea, only in Korea as well. So, and uh, there are very small number of core programmers. Most of them are in my company and with almost none uh, outside community members. So source code is open to other, all other people, but where is my uh, community? Can we call this project as open source project? Also, it's very hard to deploy uh, this system due to much dependencies on other projects. And then the Marvel 3D is getting more complicated and complex and huge. It gives me a lot of headache. And uh, as I already mentioned, there are lack of manuals and guides, and there are lack of clear roadmaps. This is the dark side of our Marvel 3D. Okay, thank you so much, and thank you very much for your attention. And uh, all the source code are available here. So please visit there to get the source code and to see what's going on there. And uh, if you have any questions or inquiries, please mail me. Thank you so much and have a nice weekend. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you everyone. So you can contact Sheen please, please on the... Me on the uh, links and email on your screen. So yeah, thank you for joining the Humawaka room. Six very great presentations. We have an upcoming presentation or uh, plenary session in the Malebna, Malena Libman room, uh, the annual general meeting of OSGO chapter. So in that, uh, we invite you to go there or maybe do some treasure hunting. All right, see you and yeah, enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy the rest of uh, the Phosphor G. Thank you, everyone. Bye.